You might think that hacking is just some hooded figure locked away in their parents' basement hacking away. And that's that may partially be true. However, that really misses uh, an incredible amount of very amazing hackers that are out there. One of the other things that it totally misses out is that a lot of hackers are very sociable people and a lot of them are actually extroverts. You'd never even realize that they were a hacker. And that's because whenever you interact with them, they might be socially engineering you. And so what we're gonna be talking about in this video is different kinds of social engineering attacks, uh, as well as how you can protect yourself against them. And we're gonna go through all of that right now. First, I have a handful of playlists that you may be interested in if you're wanting to learn more about cybersecurity. In fact, this video is part of both our Cybersecurity 101 playlist and our Cybersecurity uh, or in our CompTIA and our CompTIA Security Plus study guide. And so definitely check those out. I have some links down in the description. Those might be interesting to you. <laughs> now let's get into it. So first let's talk about what exactly is social engineering. Well, social engineering is whenever somebody's trying to get somebody to do something that they may not actually want to do. And atta attackers can leverage this skill set in order to gain access to different systems. In fact, most of the time, this is actually a much easier way to gain access to information or systems, and we're actually going to break down why that is here right now. So first, let's actually dive into the principles behind social engineering attacks. Why do attackers decide to use these attacks, and, and how can they actually succeed at it? Well, one, they can uh, demonstrate some level of authority. Now, this is, of course, artificial. They're trying to convince the target that they have authority. Maybe they're impersonating you know, a, uh, a CEO or any kind of a manager level figure. Uh, or they could try to impersonate someone with an industrial, you know, level of authority like they are very knowledgeable in something. Uh, one of the other things that they can do is they can try to intimidate. So making threats of firing somebody, reporting somebody to their manager. Another way is consensus. They can try to, you know, gain the trust of other people and convince the target that, you know, they have to do something. And I'll leave some of these last ones to you to Google, but of course, one of the things that we want to talk about, are the two main ones that we want to talk about here is trust and urgency uh, and building a sense of familiarity, but that ties into trust, right? And, and, and scarcity is also one of the things that kind of ties into urgency. So the, you, they're trying to make the target trust them by, of course, seeming like a familiar friend or seeming like somebody, like they have authority. Uh, and of course, they're trying to create a sense of urgency by creating a sense of scarcity. Like, you know, they have to do this before time runs out or, you know, they have to do this before a certain deadline. And so that might make the target feel a little bit more anxious around a topic and get them to do something that they may not actually want to do. Now, of course, we're going to talk about phishing. And, and I put that this is including all the other issues. <laughs> and that's because there are so many different kinds of ways that attackers can kind of manipulate this general scheme uh, of, of sending some kind of unwanted message that might have an attachment, a link, or it might have a call to action, uh, whether subtle or overt, telling the target, hey, you know, respond back to me. Now, uh, phishing is whenever an attacker sends, you know, an email and it can include an attachment, it can include a link uh, that is malicious, that can include malware or can send them to a site that can give them malware. Smishing is the same concept, however, over mobile SMS, so like a text message. Vishing can be over the phone, so like directing somebody to a website or to reach out to somebody. Uh, spam can be all kinds of things. It can just be constant unwanted content. Uh, you see this a lot on social media like Twitter or YouTube. Um, spam is basically like spam over instant message. So like I know I get this on Instagram. <laughs> Sometimes people will just like hit me up in the DMs like, hey, uh, I'm basically going to give you 1 million subscribers. And it's like that sounds wonderful uh, if I did not know that you were in fact actually spamming me right now. Whaling is whenever an attacker is trying to do this, but they are targeting like a, a C-suite level person. That is to say like a, a high level manager or like a CEO, you know, or, or any kind of like chief executive. And then of course, invoice scams is whenever a user or an attacker creates a fake invoice and they're basically trying to get the, uh, the recipient to say, this is not a real invoice. And then they'll respond back to the attacker where they will be prompted to give any kind of information. It could be banking account information. It could be private information uh, that the attacker can use later. 
And then of course we got less social, more engineering. And these are all social engineering attacks, uh, but they may not be dealing with humans directly. And, and I kind of split these into two things, right? So you got dumpster diving and that literally is dumpster diving. You throw your trash out. What kind of trash you know, are you throwing out? What kind of things could an attacker get if they dug through your trash? And that's why it's really important to use something like a, uh, like a paper shredder uh, and something that shreds you know, in a cross pattern. And that way, you know, attackers can't exactly dive through your dumpster. And then one of the other things they can do is credential harvesting. Now, this can be due to misconfigurations. This could be, you know, maybe you've, you've posted something online that might show, you know, your naming scheme on how you give usernames. And then also, you know, another document that shows clients that you have, they could potentially enumerate using that. And then other forms of recon that they can use, they could reach out directly uh, they could also, you know, perform any kind of more technical level of reconnaissance. And then I split those off with uh, typo squatting and water, typo squatting, typo squatting, jeez, and watering hole attacks because uh, t those really require them setting up a malicious website. And typo squatting is whenever they, they are basically expecting you to t create a typo in, in whenever you're trying to query a link. So let's say instead of facebook.com, with an E, you say, you know, facbook.com, and they've created a, they've typo squatted on that. They've created a domain that looks just like Facebook. So you think that you typed it in and maybe you're not paying attention. And then it prompts you to log in. You give your credentials. Now they've collected your Facebook credentials. And then, of course, watering hole is where they attempt to compromise, let's say, a third party or a site that they know that you will be returning to, or they attempt to clone. A, a, a site or a location that they know that you will be returning to where they could collect any kind of information like login credentials or other things. And then of course we got these influencer attacks. Little did you know, this YouTube channel is actually a giant socially social engineering experiment. You've all been had. Good job. Just kidding. This is not a social engineering experiment. Boy, if I were that talented. Uh, however, I kind of say that these are the influencer attacks because they do kind of require great social skills. And I include social or shoulder surfing here because you really do kind of have to explain why you're shoulder surfing to somebody because it's kind of weird, right? Especially if it's with a stranger. So that's kind of where creating that sense of authority comes in saying, oh, don't worry, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be looking over your shoulder and seeing what you're doing. Guys, that's not normal. Don't let that happen. So, uh, uh, so shoulder surfing is one way that they could do it. Maybe they're walking through an office and just kind of, you know, looking around. Think about, you know, what kind of things could be exposed to passers-by in your office or in your workspace. Another thing is tailgating. That's where they're basically just following somebody into an office. So don't let strangers, you know, just follow you into a building if it's your workspace. You know, make sure that they go, you know, escort them to the front desk. Make sure that they get to uh, you know some sort of a security checkpoint so you can validate that they need to be there. Of course, another thing would be eliciting information. So it could be phone calls, could be any kind of way that they're trying to just get information from you. One could be identity fraud, and we see this a lot um, with criminals is they'll just try to steal someone's identity. Maybe they've managed to, to steal personal information to validate uh, that in a way that they are that person. Uh, so that kind of fraud happens. Another is hoax, so creating a, a fake situation or, or a fake deal and trying to do people into it. Another is impersonation. This kind of ties into identity fraud, but maybe they uh, maybe they haven't gotten that personal information yet, but they can, uh, you know, they do they just do a really good impression. You know, they're they're kind of like Bill Hader. Uh, they can just they can do the voice, and then they've got the deep fake going on on their face. It's amazing. That would be terrifying. And then of course you got pretexting, you know, they create a, a story, right? Uh, that, yeah, they, they create a story that dupes the target. It's a pretext for why they are doing something that, that may, basically tricks the target into believing something. And then of course you got all the different influence com campaigns, hashtag influencer life, and uh, you know, things that will basically just try to say like, hey, you know, push some money to this cause uh, and, and if you push money to this cause, you're going to, you're a good person. Uh, but little do you know, you're actually sending money straight to ISIS. So 
that's not good. So those are the different kinds of social engineering attacks that you'll encounter. If you would like any of these broken down in further detail, let me know down in the comments and I will be more than happy to create a video just kind of diving into this. I know that phishing specifically is one that we all deal with and that users are very susceptible to because attackers are great at it. And in fact, attackers are really good at social engineering in general. So I think spending some more time on this topic would be valuable, but I did want to make sure that I at least created this video to get all this out. Now, if this was valuable to you, make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe for more because I am posting more for the CompTIA Security Plus study guide. And of course, you know, just make sure that you're just staying educated on cybersecurity issues. Absolutely 1000% share this with anybody that you know could could value from this video. It's important that we spread awareness about cybersecurity and that's really why I made this channel and I need your help to get this done. So with that, I'll see you next time.